We're back with another episode with Fired Up. <laughs> what up, people? What's going on? What's going right, on? What's right. going on? What's going on of, out there? A lot of NFL stuff to kind of get into here. Well, that's where we're going to start off with, with, uh, you know, Beric's team over here. The, um, the G-Men of New Jersey. Yeah, man. The Giants, well, whoo! <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Eli Manning losing his starting job, and Daniel Jones will be the starting quarterback. Mm -hmm. And you think this is the actual right time to make this move, or should this have been done eons ago? Well, in regards to the quarterback position, it's the most vital, vital position in football. So we know that going forward. As far as Eli Manning's play, it's, it's one moment he didn't have an offensive line. Now he doesn't have guys to throw the ball to. You know, not all this is on Eli. Okay, let's just make that you know as clear as we can. But in regards to answering the question, was it the right time? At this moment now, it was too early to make the decision. In my Really? Opinion. Wow. Yeah. Yes. All right, so let's say um, if Manning played at Denver or Seattle three to four years ago, how, how would you? Would they have benched him back then? Would they have made this move? Um, uh, well, Denver had a defense. Seattle has a defense. Seattle's had a running game. Denver has a running game. Those are quarterbacks' best friends. Giants, Eli won them Super Bowls because he had a decent line, a running back, and a defense. Let's make this be honest. If you have that going around anybody, you're going to have a chance to win a chip or at least get to the postseason. In this case, it's been off. There was a point in time where uh, uh, the GM uh, um, the GM for the Giants, uh, not Gettleman, um, Oh my God! I can't believe I forgot his name. Poor, poor in my in my in my position. But anyway, we spent a lot of money on defense, over two hundred million dollars. You got guys like Olivia Vernon, you know, Jack Rabbit, and all these guys. And the defense was strong, but then we couldn't score points that year. We didn't have a running game, and all we had was Odell Beckham to throw the ball to. Now you lose Odell, O line got bad, and now that's Eli's fault. Eli's running for his life. That's not Eli's fault. Defense now has been depleted. You done, tra you done traded all your best defensive assets, Alice Ham, and that's Eli's fault. Now Golden Tate is out for four games due to a drug a, a drug policy involving um, some kind of a sterile thing from trying to get his wife pregnant. <laughs> all of a sudden, that's against NFL policy, all right? And now one a follow goes down due to a knee injury. Shepard is out because of concussion protocol. Is that Eli's fault that he has nobody to throw the ball to? So this is why my point is, if not, if you're going to get rid of a guy, if you're going to bench him, bench him because everybody on across the board with a full squad is not playing well. Then you can say I need a spark. Right now, I don't think that's a good idea. I think you should at least go a couple of games, give Eli a chance when Golden Tate comes back, when uh, Shepard comes back, when you start getting your defense to play a little bit more sounder because the defense is bad simply because there's no communication, especially in the in the back and the secondary. So, not listen. That's not Eli's fault. The defense gave him twenty-eight points. It's not. You know, Eli's got a bad a bad rap for this situation. Now, you did get uh, Daniel Jones to back up Eli to learn from Eli, like it did in Kansas City. Yeah, he can be a great mentor to, uh, to Daniel Jones. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, this is the concept you're looking at. But you're making a change at the week two, and the only reason why they're doing it, and I'm gonna put this out here right now, the only real reason why they're making a change because six of the last seven seasons, get this in right, I want you to hear this now. I'm listening. Six of the last seven seasons, the Giants started 0 and 2. Six of the last seven seasons, the Giants started 0 and 2. They're gonna put that on Eli. Now, let's say with uh, Daniel Jones, um, do you see him transitioning into the uh, to the NFL? Because we see a lot of the. Uh, the uh, NFL offenses has has gone into like college offenses um, offenses. Mm. So you actually see Daniel Jones. Um, how how you think he's actually going to fare? And, and I think Daniel playing. Jones has got a listen. Daniel Jones is going. Everybody's going by the way he performed in the preseason, the way he threw the ball, how he got fast, how fast he got rid of the ball, how he took a couple of shots in the pocket from a defender while throwing the ball and made on time performance. Against the Cincinnati Bengals was the only time he went against a uh, a first line defense and he torched them up. He went sixteen out of seventeen for one hundred and sixty eight yards and two touchdowns in that game. Okay, so, so you think the NFL is actually easier for new quarterbacks coming in now? Um, I don't know about easier because it's getting harder. These guys are bigger and faster, and the schemes are getting more complex. Well, the offense, I mean, not the actual play in a sense though, but like let's say learning offenses though. 
Well, no, I think it's more geared to learn things. They get listen. You want to give the quarterback enough time to learn the system, like in Kansas City with Patrick Mahomes. He sat back for a whole year, and he learned behind Alex Smith. Now Alex Smith is in Washington. Now he got hurt, so I don't know. I don't think we'll ever see him play again. But he let Mahomes learn. Now look what Mahomes is doing now. Mahomes is in his second year through fifty touchdown passes, won MVP of the league, and now look at Mahomes now. He's in better this year than he was last year. So to that point. Gettleman had went on, the Giants GM had went on public and said, listen, I want the, the Kansas City situation to play out here. I mean, okay, if you believe that, then Daniel Jones should be riding the bench for this year, learning from Eli. How did he learn anything from Eli or anybody else through four preseason games, which he played well, he, had, he had a great preseason. He did, but, I mean, how are you going to sit down and get the whole regular season concept? He hasn't taken a snap yet in real deep. He's going to be going against a big-time defense now. They're going to start in Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay has a good defense. They blitz a lot. They blitz from the corner. They blitz. They do stunts. I mean, he, I don't know what he's seen and hasn't seen, but he's going to learn. So is he is he a, a, a good pocket quarterback or he's a good running quarterback? Was it like, let's say if, they, if um, they go against the Patriots, you know, Bill Belichick, let's say if he's not a good pocket quarterback, I think Belichick would actually keep him in the pocket. Daniel Jones will run when needed. Daniel Jones is not a first-minded runner, a quarterback. He's a pocket quarterback. He will go through his reads, go through his progressions. If all else fails, he does have the sense to run. He has shown ability to run. They put him in spot duty in the Cowboy game two weeks ago, two and a half minutes ago in the game. The game was already decided. And he went three or four right there, and then he ran 15 yards, and when he got hit, he fumbled the ball. That was on him. But he does have a, de- a decent rate of speed, nothing, nothing to sneeze about. But Daniel Jones is a guy who will go to his progressions, he'll go to his reads, and if all else fails, he'll run out the pocket. He does have a decent level of speed. So who knows how they'll – listen, right now the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have nothing on Daniel Jones except what happened in the preseason, which really you don't really game plan against because no one in the NFL shows their real game plan in the preseason. So right now the Buccaneers have nothing on Daniel Jones. So if Daniel Jones come out and plays well in this game, stop the presses. Because no one had any real intel on this man just yet. And if he's able to make some reads and make some good throws, guess what? We're going to go from there. All right, so the Jets had a, is having an awful start, too. They're missing seven starters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sam Donald. Um, is the- Sam Donald's a non-football thing. Mono is a serious deal. Reason why, because of the, in- because of the, of the issue of Mono, you can get more of an inflamed spinal cord. And quite frankly, you don't need an inflamed spinal cord playing football, playing a severe contact sport, because what will happen then, they're talking about darn near death, according to the severity of this particular illness. So, I mean, you're looking at maybe indefinitely. We don't know when he's coming back. According to him, according to Sam Donald, he might be back by week five. Wow. That's that's High. Well, they went. This is like I think they're going through like this is like their third quarterback they actually going through. Yeah, right the backup right? quarterback yeah, Trevor yeah. Sivian went down Monday night against the Cleveland Browns, broke his ankle severely. I wouldn't for this, for the faint of heart, man. You can YouTube it. I wouldn't watch it though, but I've seen worse. But his ankle kind of turned inward and broke. So Sivian, dislocated or no, it broke. broke. Okay, because his his foot was kind of. It was kind of dangling a little bit when he was repositioning his leg after the hit. Oh, okay. So, so it was like a compound fracture, basically. Yeah. So he, yeah. he and they went to a third stringer, some guy named Folk, and then they just hired. They just signed another player just uh, yesterday, who's supposed to back up this guy, Folk. So uh, right now the Jets are working on a third string quarterback, and all they have is an offensive weapon is Le'Veon Bell, all right. And Le'Veon Bell's gonna be beat up before the season ends. I'll tell you that right now. So I feel bad for the Jets. All right, more NFL coming at you. All right, um, Cleveland Browns, baby, Cleveland Browns. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Over hype. Hey, listen, I'm going to tell you something. They look good against the Jets, the J E T S, Jets, Jets, Jets. But I'm going to tell you something. I wouldn't buy into that stock with the Browns. Why? Because they were inconsistent on many phases. Now, Miles Garrett, the right defensive end, that guy's a beast. He had three sacks in that game. I mean, Meacham, the left tackle, could not block him. And, you know, the quarterbacks were finding ways to elude this man. But All right, so now the, now Baker Mayfield, do you actually see him as the next Tom Brady? Or, or No. No, you don't see him as that? No. I think one of the NFL, ESPN um, announcers was actually saying he was the next 
think Brett. I'm not. I forgot. I, was, I think he was saying. No, yeah, they're always looking for the next somebody. They're always looking for the next somebody. All right, so let's 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 go into Baker Mayfield here, man. The last two games, uh, two Please. touchdowns, mm-hmm. four interceptions. Uh, his quarterback uh, passer rating lower than Eli Manning. Well, uh, most team... of those, most of those interceptions came in Week One against Tennessee. They got beat right. forty-three to thirteen. So we're going to go back to what he's done. See, against the Tennessee Titans two weeks ago, Tennessee had a very aggressive defense. They were zoning. When you zone, the quarterback has to hold the ball a little bit longer than normal. If you man up, the quarterback can get his easier read. So they were they were blitzing from the corner. They were doing stunts with the linebackers up the middle, the A gap, B gap, and I, I, you know, you know, Baker had a hard time making his reads and making his throws. And then he was trying to force the ball into Odell Beckham Jr., who was at most times, I would say, he was open. But the moment he got, the moment the ball was on his way, he was double covered. All right, now, now Jarvis Landry, what's going on with him? Nothing. Uh, Jarvis Landry is the, this, this is not, he, he's just, very, he's very, just, yeah, he's, yeah. he's just there. And I think they have to work the way they have to listen. The head coach um, of the Cleveland Browns, um, he, you know, he's learning too. You know, he just started this job as well, uh, as far as being a head coach. Um, he used to be a quarterback in college, so he has a pretty good idea how to run an offense. And the bottom line is he's got to find a way to get all this talent to link up at one. You got Nick Chubb at running back, and guess what? You got that guy Kareem Hunt, that same running back that was with the Kansas City Chiefs a year ago, who who hit that woman in a hotel lobby last year. All right, he got he he was basically suspended for eight games. So he's gonna return. So you're gonna have two big time running backs. You got Odell Jarvis Landry and Juku the tight end. You got the pass rush. The defense looks pretty sound. I mean, he has to learn well, how to get Freddie Kitchens. They still have the most penalties, right? Uh, right now. No, that's the and, 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 and that's penalty. And that's Freddie Kitchens. Freddie Kitchens, the head coach of the Cleveland Browns. Okay. He has to find a way to get them more disciplined, and find a way to get all that talent linked up into one to get them. Both and also, team. listen, managing the egos too. Uh, is that is that a part of it? I think you're talking about Odell. <laughs> talking about egos. See, I don't want to say the name. Yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm say the name. <laughs> I'm going to say a name, all right? I'm going to put it out there. I love Odell. He was a member of the Giants. I have one of his jerseys at home. I, listen, the guy's an absolute stud. And I do think at some point between this year and next year, he'll be deemed the number one best receiver in football. Um, I just think the way things worked out in New York was bad. I think he still could have been a Giant had things been handled differently. But overall, listen, there are some talent, a lot of talent in that, in that locker room. There are some egos, starting with Odell. But, you know, at the end of the day, Freddie Kitchens' job, is to learn how to corral that, get them all in one sink. I do think once he does that, Cleveland Browns will be a formidable team in the NFL for the next couple of years. All right, so the offensive line of the Cleveland Browns is bad right now. It's bad, and right. Li- and their linebackers. And you know who got their best offensive lineman? The Giants. In the trade. Wow. In the trade with Odell. Zeitler is a right guard. He was traded by the Cleveland Browns to the Giants. So the best guy they have on that team offensively is in the Giant uniform now. Go figure. All right, now what about their linebackers, the situation with that? What, Cleveland? Yeah. Um, they got decent linebackers. I think most of their pressure is coming from the front four, starting with Miles Garrett, who had, like I said, three sacks early in, in, in the Jet game. I mean, he was an absolute beast. He was a stud. Couldn't, he couldn't block the guy. So, again, you know, they have uh, Ward. They got some guys out there in the secondary that can cover. I, like I said, they got a lot of talent on both sides of the ball. They got to get a linked up in one. Cleveland will be all right if they get all together. All right, all right. Let's get into some NBA. NBA all the way. Man, I'd say the NBA never stops, does it? It doesn't stop at all. I may want to stop here and there, but it doesn't stop. Why? Because there's always somebody doing something or somebody saying something. But go ahead, my brother. What do you got? (laughs) All right, so the window for the Houston Rockers. I think the owner, Tillman for Tita. Tillman for Tita. For Tita. For Tita. Sorry, sorry. He believes, what was that? I I didn't catch that interview with... um, he believes the Houston Rockets have a window of opportunity, which is basically this year, this upcoming season, the 2019-2020 upcoming NBA season. He says that with this unit that he has, with a bunch of 30-year-old players, and yes, Harden and Westbrook have going to be 30 years old by the time the season starts next year, or at least somewhere in the season. You got a pretty old team, minus Clint, 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 Clint Patella. So what are you going to do with this team? Do you think this team, according to him, has a small window to win the championship? I'm not trying to get to the conference finals. I'm not trying to get to the NBA finals. I'm not looking for that. I want to get to the chip and win the chip. So, well, hmm. I don't my know. My opinion on that, my opinion on that, 
Mm -hmm. Well, we'll try to combine opinions and facts together here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of competition in the West right now, and there's teams, in mm -hmm. my opinion, and factual base that are better than them. Six logical teams, personally. Yeah, Go six ahead. logical teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was listening to a interview on um, B-Ball Breakdown channel on YouTube, mm -hmm. um, Coach Nick. And he had an interview with uh, Katino Mobley, and I wanted to get your opinion on this mm -hmm. because I certainly have mine. Should Should Westbrook and Harden post up more? Oh man, considering that's not that, that's not their game, it hasn't been their game their whole career. Mm. No, they, well, last there was there you was know? there was a lot of post ups from uh, James Harden. You think that would actually? Well, the idea is basically, I, and I understand where Katino Mobley is coming from. He feels that uh, it would actually preserve James Harden's legs come postseason. Well, we got we got to start where we're talking about facts here. Yes, we got to start with the head coach, Mike D'Antoni. Now, guys who are watching this, we have to admit Mike D'Antoni's offenses, whether it was led by Steve Nash, you know, Michael Finley, Dirk Nowitzki. I mean, whoever it was back in the days that you know that he's been even when he was at the Knicks. I mean, the Knicks. Didn't do much, but his offenses were supposed to be geared to go up the court. You know, let's not wait till we get to the 24-second shot clock. Let's get it. Let's get a, a quick opportunity to score the rock and do that. This has been a system forever. Does it work? I think in a regular season it does. Now, to Katino Momi's comment about saving legs, if you think posting up is going to help save these guys' legs, then fine, do it. I mean, that, that would be the basketball logic, wouldn't it? I mean, you're trying to get these guys from the opening night of the NBA season to possibly game seven of the NBA Finals. You know, I mean, that's what you, that's that's the hope. Um, but I am not a believer of Mike D'Antoni's system. Okay. okay, all right. I'm just not. It has not shown nothing more than getting to a postseason. And he did get to the Conference Finals a couple of times, I'll admit. But yeah, I think the post-up is actually just dead. I think with, you know? the, uh, with the offense... Being that you can't hand check, uh, the, the advantage would actually go to the guards. Mm -hmm. If you can hand check, then I would say, okay, well, well, let's post up because then the the bigger, much more dominant player will have an advantage. Mm -hmm. You know, being that, let's say if you can hand check a guard, you can actually steer him where you pretty much want to go, mm -hmm. and that eats up more seconds in the shot clock. You know, remember the shot clock is not your friend; it's your enemy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Uh, I don't think posting up is actually really the key there. Um, you know, I think because it's it's just with the zone defense, they can collapse, they can blitz that much easier. And I, you know, as you go far into the playoffs, you have the coaching gets better, like in terms of the mm -hmm. defensive schemes gets much better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I think that might work. Like let's say you're playing a team back to back, maybe that works, but. Um, I don't know about the but and, they, they, and to me they still have legitimate issues. The three point shooting is not there. Um, I don't need to get rid of those back to back nights. You need to do that. Yeah, yeah, but you still need you, know? you still need spacing. And if you are going to post up, you're going to need like at least four other guys that can hit the you know hit three pointers or or provide some type of you know some type of spacing. And right now, we were talking about this a couple of shows ago. Their best three-point shooters right now are James Harden and mm -hmm. um, and what's his name, Eric Gordon. Yeah, now you got and Eric. the other guy. What's his? Uh, oh, I'm gonna pull. I can't forget my man. Oh, I can't forget him. Okay, you got right now. You got you got Harden. You got Clint Capella, right? You got, these are the guys you got on your team. You got Nene, Eric Gordon, Kenneth Fareed, your boy, Gerald Green. A decent jump shooter. Yeah, but he's he's. They got my boy Anthony. Is Barrett. he a rotation player though? Um, no, Gerald no, Green? no, no, Gerald Green. No, he's not. And then you got Tyson Chandler. You got PJ Tucker. You got Austin Rivers. You got Iman. And PJ Tucker. That's the guy. Yeah. Who can actually hit threes from the corner? Mm-hmm. And so I they got think Ben McLemore. They got Ben McLemore. is another shooting guard. So you know they got guards. They, they guard friendly. And you look at Tyson Chandler. Yeah, I need guards that can shoot threes. That's the main well, that's, thing. Well, that's going to be that's going to be tough. I need and the only yeah, PJ Tucker and Eric Gordon. And Eric Gordon. How was this three point? The, the, the and Gerald Green's a decent. Gerald Green's a decent three point shooter. Yeah, he's high. He's, he's streaky. He's streaky. 
So, um, but I think they have a lot of competition. San Antonio is much better now. With with Denver, Kevin, yeah, my, Kevin, I love Denver. Kevin Love there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to open up a lot. I mean, DeRozan's going to be tough, man, to actually go. Golden State's going to still be decent. Um, Portland, let's not forget Portland, let's please. Not forget Portland, All Denver. Right. We mentioned Denver. I mean, what's that team over there and the other team in LA? Not the ones that wear purple and gold. Uh, <laughs> the other team, the Clippers. Right, they're gonna be good, <laughs> very good. Lakers look like they're going to be all right. And I think, listen, I'm going to put this out here on Front Street. LeBron's going to be on the mission this year. He got tired of hearing that I'm not the best player no more. Yeah, he's going to be showing it up this year. And the team will fall right behind him. Listen, well, you have to remember, too, the East is good, too. It's equally as good. Yeah, we're talking about the West. We're talking about Mr. The West is good, too, Mr. but the Mr. East is actually <laughs> equally as good. I Indiana, understand that. Brooklyn, Milwaukee, uh, we Boston's going to be we, tough. We, we want to see, play hard. according to Fatita, he needs to get out the Western Conference. Now, how's he going to get through all these teams we just mentioned? We're going to do a, a, a season preview okay. next week of these teams. Um, maybe not not next show, but probably the following show after that. We're getting close after to the NBA the, season, by the, the way. Before the season actually starts, we're going to go team by team and mm -hmm. where we project they'll finish at and um, how far they go. The Lakers, to me, have a lot of issues, dude. They really have a lot of issues. I, I don't like. They still don't have a you bench. really like their team. You really like. They don't have a bench. They don't have a bench. That's where I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna start and leave it there. They don't have a bench. So you're talking about getting through 82 game season, and I don't know what kind of what kind of work is gonna LeBron, deal. LeBron historically takes January's off to, to preserve himself. Yeah, I don't think he can afford to do it this, in this. I, I don't think he can do it. Not this year. No. Every team has. Listen to me, guys. Every team in the NBA, practically even the worst teams. Got at least two players. Two players they can go to. There's no power team. Enough. There's no three guys and then the rest of the team. Now everybody's got the one-two punch now. That makes this NBA season coming up the most anticipated season ever. Because now practically every team in the NBA well, see the is Lakers, pretty even Steven. The Lakers has to play the Clippers four times. And they're not going to beat them. But they ain't going to beat they them. They have to play Denver four times. They have to play... I like Denver. I'll put that right there. I like Denver. <laughs> they have to play San Antonio four times. I mean, Jamal Murray over there. Yeah. Well, they have listen. to play Portland four yeah, times. That's right. Mr. Lillard over there. They have to go over to the East. They have to play at least two games. In they play the United East two times. Two, two times. Yeah, two times. So you got to face a tough Indiana team. A, 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 a tough Brooklyn team. Brooklyn's, Brooklyn's going to be tough. Philadelphia yeah. is going to be tough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Detroit. Yeah. Eh. I, you know what? Let's not sleep on Detroit. They might they might give you a little something to share. Um, who else we got in the Eastern Conference? We got uh are we expecting anything from Washington this year? No, I don't think so. No? Nah. No, nah, right. I don't think so. But Boston's tough. They got Kemba Walker. They play hard, man. They play, they play hard. hard. They play hard. They I think Boston would be a lot better than people think. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. Um if I didn't mention Knicks guys, it's because uh, no. This is a diehard Knicks fan here, man. You yeah. got to rep your team. I know. Yeah. You know what? Listen, the Knicks. I'm being I honest think the about Knicks my team. Knicks are going to be seven games better. I project seven games better. A little than bit better, but but I say you something. But the thing is, with the Knicks, who do you run the offense to? You know, I, I, Julius Randle. No, I think you let let the kid run it, man. Let RJ Barrett. Cause that's your pick. That's your future, right? Like we just talked about with Daniel Jones with Giants and everybody else. This I think NBA needs to start adopting that too. This is going to be a high draft pick. Let him learn. Let him be on the floor. But I think R.J. Barrett's going to be a yeah, lot better than people got, think. You want to start, you want to show some sort of winning. You know, these, these free agents, these marquee free agents yeah, nobody wants, are going to come and to And nobody wants situation. to come to the Garden, not because of the Garden, not because of 33rd Street and 7th Avenue. They don't want to come here because there's a guy that lives, that works the Garden, he owns the Garden, and amongst other things else, his name is James Dolan. You heard that guy? They don't like him. He has a bad reputation as far as where is a team well, Enos going. Well, Enos Canna came out a couple of weeks ago and said that, you know, he actually, Dolan actually scares off free agents. Well, if he scares off free agents, that's Enos Cantor's uh, point. But this is the same Enos Cantor that wanted to stay with the Knicks, too. So I take his words with a grain of salt. Hmm. Okay? <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's, it's not a Nick thing anyway. Please forgive me, guys, if I jumped there. But... I'm just saying, if I didn't mention them, it's because I don't think they're going to be in the mix of the playoff conversation. But That's the cool. thing is, they'll they'll, they'll play hard. Um, they'll be they hard. Definitely play hard. They'll yeah. play hard. Mm -hmm.
for their coach. What's their coach's name? David, 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 David Fizdale. Fizdale. Mm-hmm. They're going to play they hard. Gonna get Jackson, the, though. He's going to get the most out of those guys as much as he can. Mm-hmm. Remember, Jerome Robinson, he's a rim protector. Oh, yeah. He's, he's going to be a, he's gonna be up there shot blocking. I, I tell you that much. I think he's going to take a, a little mm-hmm. bit of a leap because he held Zion Williamson mm-hmm. to virtually. We do got low post presence on defense. On defense. On defense. Not yes. on offense. I, I'm not, his offensive game needs a lot of work. But defensively, yeah. We so, yeah, the Knicks aren't going to be like he's going to go in there and like, all right, let's just chalk this up as beat a Beat him by 30 points. I don't think yeah, that's going to happen. You, but... You'll beat them, yeah. but you're going to have to really, really start playing. Their inexperience is actually going to really beat them because R.J. Barrett is, you know, he's on the job training. So, mm-hmm. But it's like the, like the Brooklyn team when they got – D'Angelo Russell in mm-hmm. his first year. That team played really hard. Even though they lost a lot of games, they played hard. And you had to go in there. You had to really play. You wasn't going to just, you know, think that's what, just roll over. And that's what so I think, think you're that's going to get. the Knicks from the yeah, Knicks this year. Yeah, that's what you're going to get from there. I think R.J. Barrett is going to really raise some eyebrows. He's going to get some excitement going on the gun. I think he's going to be a lot better than people think he's going to be. So I know we didn't get Zion, but R.J. Barrett is a real deal. Trust me when I tell you. Okay. All right. Um, so France, they they win the World Cup. USA comes into congratulations. Seven, I'm not French, place. but congratulations <laughs> to France. <laughs> problem is USA came in seventh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. So Rudy Gobert. Yeah. Now he's actually proved that he he can be an offensive weapon. Do the Utah Jazz actually runs more plays for him? Um, Dude, you on, know he don't have an offensive game that really is going to take you somewhere. His presence in the paint has been his, his biggest asset. Yeah. You know that, and I know that. But do he – listen, can he help this team get some? Absolutely. I mean, you got somebody – listen, I'm trying to drive to the paint, and I see Rudy Gobert coming over there trying to pin my ball against the backboard, toss it to the fifth row. You know, it's going to make me think twice. I might pull the ball down, try to reset the offense or something. That's the presence he brings. And, yeah, I mean, I think you do – listen, Utah's going to be – we didn't even mention Utah. That's another good team in the Western Conference. Yeah. That you're gonna have to look out for. Yeah, and and the Lakers, well, Donovan and Mitchell, and the Lakers, and Houston boys. has to play those those two teams four times. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, listen, I think Rudy Gobert is gonna have, listen. That guy got a contract extension, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, listen, they know his worth. They know his worth. Well, do they run more plays for him? That, that, that's my question. Uh, because I think he, you he's do. Showing, he's showing that he can score now. I think you bit. do. Yeah. I think you do run it, but I, I, I keep telling you, international play is a little bit different than NBA play, but. I think you still have to run some plays through him and see if it works itself out. Do some testing, see what it is. And if he does, well, yeah, you got to keep the big guy engaged. You know, you got to yeah. give him give him some touches because they don't really run a lot of stuff for him offensively. Yeah, but when you um, think about him, it's on the defensive end, really. So, offensive putbacks, rejections, stuff like that. But um, I think you can definitely win with the guy in the paint. So you think this is embarrassing for Team USA to come into seventh place? No, I don't think. I just don't think they played as hard as they posted in a while. Like I said, a lot of NBA players backed out. Uh, I don't think this was the best team we could have assembled. And um, what about the coaching you think from oh, Popovich? Uh, oh, you, 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 you want to question errors? Pop? You, I'm sorry, you want to question Pop? <laughs> any errors in there you saw or anything um, really? Uh... Pop got pissed off when people questioned the team's play. And he said these guys are the best they could, and I believe Pop. If Pop say, well, yeah, they have limitations. Listen, Mason Plumlee can't give you the, mm-hmm. the, the spacing that you need, right? To to bring, uh, they did the best they could. Rudy Gobert at the paint. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know what happened with Brooke Lopez. Um, well, they didn't use him like Milwaukee used him. Let's put it like that. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, they were, <laughs> you know, uh, Brooke was on that team because the way he played in Milwaukee. But which again backs up my thing about saying international play has a slightly different concept and rules. But you know, still, you you know, there's guys that have certain assets. I don't care if the ch- the rules change a little, but you can still keep Brooke out there on the top of the key. That brings guys like Rudy Gobert out the paint, wouldn't it not? Yeah, well, listen, they have to, you know, they, the ESPN yeah, did a horrible job of televising this or NBA TV. You know, this stuff, there, there's, the games is playing. I see, oh, 1970s throwbacks, and it was some stuff that I was, I was trying to I don't to know if there's these. a contract issue with that, though. But I don't know, but let's just say Kevin Durant and, and Steph Curry and all the big-time players on USA, would we have seen more USA games? I think so. Well, speaking of that, Stephen Curry wants to play for Team USA in uh, in 2020. Mm. That's in my bag of notes. Yeah, yeah, bag of notes. <laughs> bag of notes. That's going to be our new segment, <laughs> bag of notes. All right, we're going to have a bag of notes segment every time. It's going to be in the tail end. I'll tell you what, Steph did say he's going to push hard to be as healthy as he can for the upcoming season, the 2019-2020 NBA season. And he's going to also try to make sure he's in good health 
to compete. Well, he's going to be, level, listen, in my personal opinion, and uh, we, we all have watched a ton of Golden State Warrior games. I think Steph Curry is probably the most driven uh, driven player on that team, regardless of getting into the paint. He does create his own shots. And, you know, when you look at the rest of the team, who is anywhere near Steph in creating those shots? So th this is kind of why you get a, uh, you, you know, your, your man over there. You swear you, you swear you pick him up because he can be that other guy that can put pressure on the defense. Allow Steph and make plays and make plays. And make so plays. That's the key thing. It's just it's not just about scoring. Mm -hmm. It's about knowing when they actually pass yeah, the basketball, exactly. or release the basketball at a certain time. I think D'Angelo Russell will pick that up. Yeah, and you know, but we have to see if uh, Steph Stephen Curry is going to be heavily relied on, relied on this oh, year. He has to do is. a lot until Clay is. Thompson gets until back. Clay gets back. So, but okay. let's see how his ankles are. Remember, you know, you remember, remember his ankles aren't. You know, the yeah. best. Draymond's got to step his game up. Draymond, you got a contract, right? You, you do not? So yeah, you got to step, contract, you gotta step got your game up too, baby. You got to step your game up even more than what it is now. You're going to be called upon to make a little bit more shot opportunities than you were before. You know? Ah, so, see, I cringe when he has the hey, ball in his hands. Hey, man. listen. But you know, he's a good point so forward. He, he's a good point forward because I've seen him times when he pushed the ball at the floor. He could do that. He but could remember, do that. Remember the. Uh, when him and KD got into that argument, he pushed the ball up the floor and he fumbled on the play. Well, that was K that was K that was supposed to be yeah. KD's position at that point. But I, yeah, well, he it. was wide open. He he, yeah. didn't, he didn't deliver him the basket. He you know he dribbled into traffic, yeah. turned the ball over. This is what I'm saying. For let's say every ten possessions that Draymond has the ball, mm. you know, let's say maybe four out of those ten times he does something decent with the basketball. He makes good decision with. You have mm -hmm. Steph Curry or D'Angelo Russell in 10 possessions mm -hmm. 7 or eight, eight, 8 out of 10 times they would actually make really good decisions with the basketball. Yeah, so yeah. I don't want to see Draymond handling the ball man. I, I just cringe when I see him. Yeah I'm but like, you know what? More money come more responsibilities brother. That's why, that's why I look at yeah, it. Yeah he's going to have to really step up though. You know what yeah. I mean? So, um, but they still have Kevon Looney there. Yeah. Okay. He's yeah. a good and he brought, he's, he's a good did. big that can actually mm -hmm. And he, you know, he can like get switched on to smaller guards, and he's able to move laterally mm -hmm. to to cover those guys. So, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, I think Golden State will be good. I'm not, I mean, I'm not counting those guys out, man. I was in the in the in the finals. I was like, nah, I don't think they're gonna beat. Um, when Kevin Durant went down, I thought it was pretty much over for yeah, them. Yeah, you know, and the, they showed a lot of heart, man. This, so. that, that's the whole thing too, because you know, right now we look again, we look at the next this upcoming season. Like I said, we'll touch base on that. Uh, in a few weeks, in regards to what we expect from each team moving forward, but um, you know, this this you know, kind of putting a bow on the whole. Wait, October is almost here, so yeah, I think probably next week's show or the following week's show we'll do seasonal we'll starts to like uh, around Halloween. So no, I think it's going to start earlier than that. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah, yeah, yeah like October fifteenth or something like that. There'll be some. They're going to start a few weeks game. earlier. Yeah, yeah. To I spread out the schedule. Al I thought I heard Halloween. All right, well, all right. We'll just say we're, we're close by regardless. Um, I want to touch on one thing real quick before we go. Um, before our battery dies out, yeah. so because, uh, she, she's I just flashing red. <laughs> I, yeah, well, I just want to make one quick thing because I mean, right now we we got we touch basketball, we touch football. I just want to throw one quick thing about baseball right now. You know, congratulations to the Yankees and the Mets; they're doing very well right now. The Yankees look like they might give us a a good a good shot of a championship and going against the Houston Astros. How's their pitching? Pitching well. They got Severino back. You know, right. he looked real good in four innings last that's night. How, that's how you win. Pitching. Yeah. Pitching, yeah. pitching will be good hitting right now. I think our biggest competition is going to be the Houston.